Hi guys, what is up? So I thought it was about time now that I should release this 2D to 3D um, photo tutorial. And uh, I'm going to use the same photo that I used for the actual uh, demonstration video, the little test I did. And uh, the, only reason I haven't, the only reason I've taken so long is I wanted to try and find another photo, but actually it's quite hard to find a photo that's actually suitable for this effect, as obviously you need something that can be easily content aware from its background and you'll see why when I start in this video. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to separate anything that's in the foreground from the background. So obviously in this photo, the Spider-Man is in the front and the New York City skyline is in the background. So, I'm just going to use the quick selection tools to select Spider-Man. Now, I wouldn't advise you using the uh, quick selection tool as uh, it's not very accurate and I do prefer using the pen tool. Uh, for example, that. And actually, it's quite frustrating to use, but the only reason I'm using it is because, obviously, uh, I don't really have much time to sit and pen tool it, and I'm sure you guys don't want to sit and watch me pen tool around a character for ten minutes. So, um... And then again, this tool isn't exactly... time efficient. Um... Yeah, so you want to just get your rough um, selection. Wow. Um, let me just sort that out at the bottom there. So you want to just get a selection which is roughly correct. And um, Right, there we go. So you want to select around this uh, cutout Spider-Man here with your control and just click on the thumbnail. Then you want to go back onto your background and go to select, modify and expand and then put expand by about 5 pixels and press OK. Then you want to right click, fill and make sure use content aware is selected. Then just press OK. It might take a little while but it will try and fill it in as correct as it can. Obviously it's never perfect but for the purpose of this tutorial obviously I'm not going to sit here and content aware every little building. If you want to do that yourself, you can obviously use the spot healing brush or the clone stamp. Then what I'm going to do, just get rid of this text at the bottom here by doing exactly the same thing, fill, content aware. And if you're happy with how that looks, I mean, you that's not exactly fab, but um, if that's how you want it to look, then by all means, just do it like that. Um, I'll just content aware that finger. No, I won't actually. I'll select it, put it onto this layer. Actually, put it on him, and then contents are where on this layer. So it's quite a fiddly little thing. I mean, that's the only reason it's taking this long to come out of the video, really, because. Uh, I really needed a photo which could be done quite easily and quite quickly in this tutorial. So anyway, once this is done, you want to go to File, Save As, and you just want to save it as a PSD, and I'll just save as Spider-Man. Maximise compatibility to make sure that's checked. Click OK. And uh, we'll now head over to After Effects, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, here we are now in After Effects. I don't know why I said see you in a minute. It took about a second. Um... Right, so we need to go to File, Import, File, and you want to select the layer. And when you have selected the PSD and it asks you if not you want any of these selected, make sure Editable, editable Layer Styles Edible and Live Photoshop 3D is all selected. So once that's in there like that, you want to open up this folder and you've got your two layers here. Then you want to go down to your composition. Now... I'll ask you if you want a single composition, and it'll ask you if you want to sequence your layers. Make sure the sequence layers is untaped, and make sure everything else is how I've got it here. Then just press OK, and you've got your image like that. Now, of course, we don't want it that size, so you want to right-click on your composition, composition settings, and change it to 1920 by 800. Now, 800 just gives you the black bars, like a Blu-ray file is 1920 by 800, and... Uh, I think the Spider-Man is on that layer, right, yeah. So, obviously we need to drag him back to where he was, which is about there. And what you can do is just drag these in a little bit, because it's a bit, it's a bit 
small. It was a bit too zoomed in. And uh, so there's our Spider-Man on there. And I think actually he's a little bit out of place there. Yeah, I think he was about there. So maybe we'll just move that again. Okay, and you don't want to move it around and make this area outside too small because obviously when you're adjusting the camera you don't want to get the black bars at the side of the screen where the picture's been cut off. So it's always good to use a picture which is higher than the resolution of the video you're trying to make. Um, so yeah, what you want to do now is you want to make sure these 3D bits are selected. So where the little cube is here, if you don't have that, then uh, make sure you click on toggle switches and modes and then it'll come up there. So now that's done, you want to go to your camera view and click on top. Now, the Spider-Man layer, you want to bring it right forward on the Z-axis. So now when we go back to active camera, he'll actually be in front of the background by quite a lot. So what you want to do now is you want to go to layer, new camera. Just click OK, you don't have to worry about any of these settings, so just click on OK. And then you can just click on the orbit camera tool here and once you just already change you're starting to be able to already see that 3D effect now see what I mean there by the black sides yeah you can avoid that by just not panning that much so just make sure nothing rides into that view section so if you want to actually start uh, messing around with the camera you want to just go on to transform and make sure that all of these little, uh, timers are highlighted here so you can start adding keyframes and you can just start off by having your first shot like that and then you can have your last shot however long you want it to be oh, it's done it in about five seconds brilliant um, let me just change that on the composition settings hmm. out here. Sorry about this guys. Right so and then what you can do is obviously drag it right to the end about on about five seconds and just drag it to the opposite side. So you can really see that change of angle and what's going on there which looks really nice and obviously you can still play around with all the different angles and stuff so I mean you could have it like that if you wanted to and really have it angling that shot I mean it's really up to you how you mess around with the camera angles it's you know it's your project it's up to you how you do it um, And I mean, once that's done, what you can do then is close your camera down. And with all of these selected, just go to Layer, Pre-Compose, make sure Move All Attributes into New Composition is checked, and Open New Composition is also checked. And there you've got your pre-comp there, with everything done. And then what you can do, obviously, is add any effects, like looks or whatever, to make this photo look a bit more... Well, to make it, make it a bit more punchy. So obviously you've got all these different settings here. They're actually my own presets. Um, let me popular film. But whatever, anything like that. Just to make the image look a bit more interesting. And that's basically it. And that's how the 3D image works. It's just all to do with putting things on a different angle and bring them forward, messing around with the camera. It's all personal preference, it's how you want it to be done. So, if you don't like the way I did it in the video, that's fine. Do it however you want to do it. Um, obviously everything's down to personal preference, so... Hope you found this tutorial uh, interesting and helped you to understand the effect a little bit more. 
feel free to leave video responses with your own tests if you've gone out and done it and tried to fiddle around with the effect yourself. Feel free to leave that as a video response. It would be great to see what you guys come up with. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another tutorial.